Hey everybody, hope you all are having a fantastic day. I wanted to jump on here and um, increase your faith a little bit, so let's get into it. So today I wanted to present to you guys um, some archaeological evidence that supports uh, the Bible. So the first one we're going to start off with is Sodom and Gomorrah. Genesis uh, chapter 19 verses 23 through 25 read the sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zor then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah for the Lord out of the heaven from the Lord out of the heavens so he overthrew those cities all the plain all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground so we are told that these five cities are located in the plains of Jordan, um, which archaeologists ha do believe that they've, fi they've found these five cities, um, which would be Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, Zeboim, and Bela, also known as Zor. Each of these cities contain evidence of brimstone, which is claimed in the Bible to have rained down from God. Um, and so the brimstone in these areas is composed of 96 to 98% sulfur with trace amounts of magnesium. Um, and this creates a very high temperature burn, uh, so high that the area is littered with crystal and glass that came from the melted rock and other elements that were burning at such a high heat. These areas are also the only places on earth where you can find 96% um, pure monoclinic sulfur in a round ball. Um, and the brimstone in this area is also not a result of geothermal activity. So ge geothermal activity is, um, it's basically when heat is transferred from inside of the earth um, up to the earth's surface. Some examples of this would be like hot springs, geysers, hot lakes, and things like that. Um, there is no evidence of this in the area, so the brimstone just kind of is out of nowhere. These cities are spoken of in Genesis chapter 10, verse 19, as being a border for the Canaanite region, uh, making a north to south line along the Jordan and the Dead Sea area. So when aerial pictures are taken of these areas, um, you are able to visibly see these five cities because of the amount of ash that is, that is presented. It looks like little spots on a map. I'll show you guys. We can't have the story of Sodom and Gomorrah uh, told without the story of Lot's wife also being in it. So chapter 19, verse 26 in Genesis says, But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Over in Israel, on Mount Sodom, is a pillar of salt that is called Lot's wife. If you look at it, it looks like the form of a woman, possibly wearing some sort of shawl or dress looking over the plains of the Jordan. In Exodus chapter 17, uh, we will start at verse 5. And the Lord said to Moses, Go on before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel. Also take in your hand your rod with which you struck the river and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. So he called the name of the place Massa, or Meribah, because of the contention of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? 
sorry, I think that's, it's just funny because we do the same thing nowadays. But yeah, so this rock um, was actually found, um, let's see, it's standing in Saudi Arabia today. Uh, it's a huge rock that shows a split right down the middle of it with evidence of water erosion um, coming from the center of the rock and going down into eroded channels um, all throughout this valley that this rock is located at um, so that it is very possible. First of all, there's no water in this really dry desert, so there shouldn't be water erosion, but there is. Um, and secondly, uh, there it was a large enough area for these millions of Israelites to encamp and also drink and stay for the two years that um, that is stated in the Bible they stayed there for. Another awesome archaeological find are the two pillars uh, that were found. Let's see, one was on the beach of Nuweiba, um, crossing over the Red Sea over into modern-day Saudi Arabia. So these pillars were found one on one side, and basically you draw a straight line. You draw a straight line across, and there's another pillar right on the other side. And um, inscribed on the pillar on the Saudi Arabian side, uh, it gave credit to King Solomon for building these pillars as a as a reminder of the Red Sea crossing, but that pillar on the Saudi Arabian side has been taken down and um, replaced with a marker on the floor. I'm not exactly sure why. I think it's because they didn't really like another religion or another faith um, being proven in their country. So. Also important to mention, um, in between these two pillars is a natural um, land bridge, which um, when the sea opened up, the Israelites were able to just walk on straight through. And the reason why that's so important is because the Red Sea is littered with uh, these large valleys and canyon-like um, areas that can reach depths of almost 10,000 feet deep. So whenever they crossed the Red Sea and when the Lord had moved the waters uh, to the right and to the left of them, it had to be in a perfect area where they wouldn't have to be, you know, going up and down and climbing and everything. They literally went straight across and you can find that natural land bridge right now. Um, I believe they call it, it's, uh, they crossed the Red Sea at the Gulf of Aquaba, if you guys want to go and check that out. And the fourth piece of evidence I have for you is also has to do with those two pillars. Um, the archaeologists that found those two pillars decided that, okay, if there's a straight line across, there's got to be evidence of the Egyptians' chariots or artifacts underneath um, on the ocean floor, on the sea floor uh, that prove that uh, there was some sort of crossing or whatever. And so when they looked, Lo and behold, they found um, chariots and other artifacts covered in coral and preserved just for us to be able to find um, in this day and age. I hope that brought you guys a little bit of encouragement and showed you all that our Bible, the Word of God, is truth and um, we can believe everything that's said inside of it. So I hope you all have a wonderful day, and yeah, I will talk to you soon, God willing. Bye.